Women's, women's 15 here. Another blowout. This is interesting. Low key, like women's eight, blowout. Women's 15, blowout. Women's two mile, blowout. Obviously, Hassan's 5K was designed to be a time trial, but that was a blowout as well, too. But Faith Kipyegon just ran away from everybody again. I thought the world record might be in play, but she still ran really fast time here, um, backing up her Olympic title, 353.23, won by over six seconds. Garden. This was one of those, it's like, oh, this race is fast, but it's like, nah, the race wasn't fast. It was just one person in the race was really fast. Yeah, I mean, Kip Yegan is sh- like, her her win over Monaco just becomes more and more impressive, right? Beating um, Safana San. Obviously yeah. followed up with beating her again at the Olympics. But now this like time trial type race for her, she just looked so like on a different planet as the rest of the field. Yeah. It was it was kind of like weird. It's like, whoa, like how can you be that much better than everyone else? Like this doesn't make sense. And I think we're starting to see that just as a trend in our sport. Like you mentioned, we see people who are just like so much better than the rest of the field because of whatever reason they just happen to be in a certain timeline that's different from everyone else where their peak is just like yeah. on a, different from everyone else's. Uh, but what I want is I want to kind of combine Faith Kipiegon's performance with a little bit of Jakob Ingebrigtsen and not to bring up controversial athletes, but it kind of reminds me of when Kiprop and the Baba were running fast in their 1500s respectively, and they were chasing world records I think we might be kind of seeing something similar to that with Kip Yegon and, and Jakob with they're both kind of entering their prime. Jakob, you could say, is still pre-prime. But every time Faith yeah. Kip Yegan steps on that track, we're going to be thinking, do we see 349? That's what we're going to be thinking. Well, and here's the situation now on the women's side of things. You have now the 100 and 200 records are under threat. 400 is still out there. 800, 15 is under threat. The five and the ten, if they get together the right field, it's definitely possible because they were broken this year. Four minute hurdles is going down every every time Muhammad and McLaughlin get together. Women's high hurdles, Kenny Harrison's twelve two. Well, Camacho Quinn got pretty close this year. Women's steeples a little bit out there. Then he could get into into the field events as well too. But you got a situation where in any given meet you have people who are world record capable. Yeah, in 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 at least Every one of these bit. women's races, because well, because the chance of a diamond league happening that like doesn't have either Thompson Hurrah, a thing Mo, Faith Kipiegon, Safan Hassan, Muhammad McLaughlin, uh, Kenny Harrison, or Camacho Quinn, like you figure like at least one of them is going to be at these at one of these meets. So I, it's it's really interesting right now. The women's side of things is really interesting from a historical perspective. Yeah, agreed. Anything else we have? 